Hey, Sasha, I heard from Thomas that you're stuck at home for a while. You're not just faking it to get some time off, are you? Hi, Marie. The doctors say it's the only option right now. My blood pressure is through the roof, and I feel awful. There's nothing they can do except tell me to chill out. Doctors know best, right? She said I have to be very careful. No strenuous activity. Well, I hate to say it, but I noticed you were looking a bit chubby lately. You know, big people have to watch out. Especially when you're expecting. Really? My doctor didn't say anything about losing weight. In fact, she said I was perfectly healthy. I might have gained a few pounds, I admit. I stopped going to yoga when I found out I was pregnant. Maybe I should try some online classes at home. I know it would have been good for me and the baby. The doctor said it's common for women to have high blood pressure when they're pregnant, especially with their first. Anyway, I'm just following her advice and taking it easy. Work was so hectic before I left. This is the first time I've had a chance to relax in ages. Oh, really? I don't recall anyone telling me that when I was pregnant with Thomas or his brothers. It sounds like your doctor has given you a free pass to be a couch potato. Ah, uh, we were tougher than you kids back then. We had to do everything ourselves and we didn't have all these fancy doctors and their machines and gadgets. My mother told me a story of a woman who used to work on one of them big corn farms in Nebraska. She had her baby early right in the middle of her tractor. She didn't bother to call for help, so she finished the harvest with the baby still hanging out. That's how it was back then. Are you kidding me? That sounds like a complete myth. I don't believe that for a second, even for your generation. No, my mother swears it's true. It happened to a friend of her cousin's friend. So, you're just gonna lounge around, huh? Binge on all that Netflix you've missed. Yeah, until my blood pressure goes down. If it doesn't, the doctor said we might need to try some medication. Oh, no. You can't take any drugs when you're pregnant. It'll hurt the baby. I asked her about that. She said that the latest research shows that blood pressure medicine is safe for the baby, but hopefully just resting at home will do the trick. I don't want to take any pills if I can avoid it. This... resting at home... does that mean you're not doing any housework? Pretty much. I'm just doing the bare minimum. Folding, washing, vacuuming a little bit. You know, the things that get messy if you don't do them every day. But Thomas has been great. He's doing a lot more around the house. He's always been like that. He even cooks sometimes. He spends most Sundays watching cooking shows on YouTube. Yes, but Thomas is working his butt off every day. Why should he have to come home after a long day and do housework? Because he's going to be a dad? I'm carrying his child, so he's happy to pitch in more. He already did a lot. This isn't the 1950s. We talked about how I need to stay still as much as possible. And he said he'd do most of the housework, at least while I'm home resting. Ha! <laughs> you millennials. What's wrong with you people? Don't you see how much stress you're putting on him? Having to come home and do all the housework while you're lying around getting fatter. He doesn't have a moment to himself. Well, I'm not just sitting around. I do what I can and our house is not that big. It's going to be much harder for both of us when the baby comes. My friends with babies always look exhausted. And they often have to bail on coffee days because of emergencies and illnesses. Thomas and I were talking about this last night. We were laughing, saying this is the quiet before the storm. <laughs> I see. But we'll manage, just the two of us. And then the three of us. We've been dreaming of this for a long time. I'm lucky enough to have a boss who gets it. He told me to take as much time as I needed on 80% pay. That's pretty amazing in this place. Are you exploiting Thomas's kindness? It sounds like you're treating him like your personal chef, maid, and servant. I think that's unfair. I hope he does it for me and the baby, not because he feels obligated. Ha! <laughs> well, I guess there's no choice. I'll have to go over there and clean up myself. What? You'd come all this way to clean our house? No. Thank you so much is the right response you should have given. Sometimes I'm amazed with my generosity. I thought you'd appreciate my help. It's okay. You don't have to come over. Right now, we're doing okay. My sister also said she'd come over when she's back for spring break. We'll let you know when we can't handle it anymore. Until then, it's okay. 
Oh, it's clear that time is now. The last time I was there, I had to bite my tongue about how messy it was. Really? I never thought it was that bad. Like I said, Thomas helps out, and I do as much as I can. And anyway, I'm not going over for you. I'm gonna try and ease some of the load Thomas has to carry. The poor boy can't be expected to work hard all day and then come home to a mountain of chores. He'll wear himself out. But it's a long way from there to here. Isn't it a hassle? If I'm making the effort to get over there, the least you could do is pay for the cab. I'll have to check with Thomas about that. We've been saving up lately. From your place to here, it must be at least an hour. That will cost a fortune. Just use your own money! Before you got pregnant, you worked for how long? More than ten years? You must have a lot of savings. That's not the issue. If you insist, I guess the house could use a deep clean. Well, to be honest, I didn't want to help at all, but my conscience got the better of me. Your baby's a girl, right? That's very disappointing. I was hoping for a boy with all my heart. I prayed every night for a grandson. When I heard you were having a girl, I lost all interest. Is that so? I'll be sure to let her know how you feel when she's born. When you and Thomas got married and I met your family, I was so disappointed to see your siblings were all girls. And now you're following the same pattern. Your first child is a girl. You have no idea how upsetting that is for a grandmother. I don't care what gender the baby is, as long as he or she is healthy. I'm sure Thomas agrees with me. Of course you would say that. Well, you better make sure the next one's a boy. Then you'll be forgiven. Forgiven for what? What century do you think this is? China tried to get rid of girls, and look how that turned out. You really don't get what a boy would mean for this family. Honestly, Sasha, you young people have no respect or loyalty to family. As soon as you recover from this baby, I want you to start working on a brother for her. Okay? Can I have this baby first? I can't guarantee anything. It's not easy to have a bunch of kids these days. Those days are long gone. Everything is a financial burden. Rubbish! The Lord wants you to have more children. The more you have, the more love and support a family will have. And most importantly, we need a boy to carry on the family name. Girls get married and leave like you and I did. We need a strong young man to take charge and make sure this family survives for the next hundred years. My great-great-great-great-grandfather was one of the founders of this city after escaping poverty in Ireland. Okay, I'll try, but you can't pick what the baby will be. And I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of women these days are keeping their maiden names. Or combining them with their husband's names. Yes. And it often results in a jumbled, unpronounceable mess. Imagine Galifianakis on the poor kid. He'd have a nightmare trying to spell that at school. Anyway, I have things to do. I'll be there at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Have the money ready for the cab. I haven't had a chance to go to the ATM this week. Okay, if you insist. I'll see if we have everything we need and get Thomas to pick up anything we're missing. See you tomorrow. What's going on, Sasha? Thomas tells me you don't need my help anymore. Hi, Marie. I'm doing some of the housework, so you don't have to come all this way to help out. We both feel it's not fair to rely on you so much. Thanks for the last few days, though. We really appreciate it. You just want me gone, right? You can be honest with me. I told Thomas he was too soft on you letting you boss him around. Well, spit it out! Whatever you have to say, you can say it in my face. There is something that really bothers me. Oh, yes. What is it? More whining about me, I bet. Or how hard your life is. I think Thomas already told you, but when you're here cleaning, you bump into me. That's because you're always in the way. How can I clean with a huge pregnant woman blocking my path? I told you to give me room to clean. You're always right where I don't need you to be. The hallway is tight enough as it is without your enormous belly in the way. How am I supposed to get through? I don't think that's true. What then, huh? Are you accusing me of hitting you on purpose? Is that what you're saying? 
Well, yes, that's how it looks. And it wasn't just once. Right now, just moving around is hard, and a fall could really hurt things. It could hurt the baby. As I told you, I really need to rest. Look at yourself! How could anyone clean around that? You fill up the living room, the hallway, the kitchen, and you blame me? I can't believe my sweet boy married such a troublemaker. Sorry, being pregnant has made me very sensitive. I'm usually more easygoing. Easygoing? More like you're lazing on the couch now. It's hard to imagine anyone being more easygoing. Are you resting from resting? Crazy hormones, I guess. I'll say, getting all worked up over such a small thing. You're hysterical! It's not good for the baby to be so emotional. Having such a hysterical mother will ruin the child. She'll grow up to be just as hysterical as you. Or worse. You don't have to be so harsh. This is my first pregnancy. Of course I'm anxious and scared about things. I'm only telling the truth. I wasn't lying around the house getting in the way when I had my first child or second or any of them. I just kept quiet and got on with things. I dread to think what this family will be like if that girl grows up to be like you. Let's just hope that Thomas's calm and loving personality wins out in the DNA. Please don't come here again until I've had my baby, okay? To be honest, after all this, I'm not sure I even want you to come here after that, either. I'll talk to Thomas about it tonight when he gets home. That's some twisted thinking there! I know you're stressed out about having your first baby, but to use me as a scapegoat for your anger is going too far. It's all my fault, is it? Marie, I know you've always hated me. I sensed it from the moment I met Thomas. I thought I could handle having a mother-in-law who despised me. I thought it was just between you and me, and I could live with it. But now you're already bad-mouthing my baby. My unborn baby. Thomas and I don't give a damn if it's a boy or a girl. It makes no difference to us. She's our miracle. So can you back off? So you're telling me you don't want me near the baby? You deprive a grandmother of her grandchild. You really are a nightmare, aren't you? I doubt you can even cope with giving birth in your state of mind. I fear for that baby. What are you talking about? I'd be fine if certain family members didn't stress me out. You've gone from being physically incapable of doing housework and needing to nap all day, to being mentally unstable for anything. I wonder if the strain of giving birth won't push you over the edge. Over the edge? I'm not crazy, I just need to rest. This is hard. Do I have to spell it out for you? I've seen you deteriorating lately. How can you be so cruel if you weren't Thomas's mother? Look, I don't want you around. Please, stay away. I feel the same way. I can't stand to look at your fat, puffy face again. It broke my heart to see you marry my wonderful son. Now, all my nightmares have come true. I just pray the whole thing doesn't end in tragedy for my Thomas and the baby. Oh, Sasha, darling, are you awake? How are you feeling? I was so scared. What do you want? Didn't Thomas tell you to leave me alone? You can't talk to me like that, can you? What do you mean? Well, you're in the hospital now, right? I heard you were taken there in an ambulance. You must be in a horrible state. Is the baby okay? I was so scared I couldn't sleep last night. Thomas hadn't said a word, so I thought I'd text you myself. I know you don't like me much right now, but families need to stick together in times like these, don't you agree? What are you talking about? I've been at home since you last saw me. <laughs> Hold on. You went out to buy lunch, right? Fell down the stairs and were rushed to the hospital. Isn't that what happened? I don't know where you got that from, but this is the first I've heard of it. I think I'd know if I'd fallen downstairs and been taken to the hospital. Today's lunch was last night's leftovers. I just finished eating and I haven't left the house. You must have got it wrong somewhere, I think. What? Are you trying to trick me? Don't want me at the hospital, is that it? A pregnant woman fell over in the street right near your house. She was taken to the hospital. I did hear a siren. That must have been her. I hope she's okay. I don't know any other pregnant women around here, though. So... it wasn't you? I'm sure. The woman who fell was wearing a summer dress just like you always wear. Yeah, well, the maternity clothes I usually wear are common with young mothers. I've seen many other moms-to-be with the same style of dress before. We probably all look alike from a distance. So it wasn't you? Well, that's a relief. 
It looked like you from behind. How do you know about it? You don't live anywhere near here. Uh, I just happen to be in the area. You're not welcome here. I thought we made that clear. You're not to show up uninvited or invited. I thought you got that. I was worried and you can't tell me where to go. It's a free country. This accident... It didn't have anything to do with you, did it? What? What are you implying? Well, it just doesn't add up. Something smells fishy. You just happen to be there. And you know all the details. Are you sure you didn't mistake her for me and bump into her? Just like you did to me when you were cleaning here? Pretend it was an accident and say sorry when really you did it on purpose. Is that what happened? How dare you! How could you accuse me of such a thing? Why would I bother to bump into someone I don't even know? You mistook her for me, didn't you? I'm telling you, it never happened. I was just there and saw her fall. I don't buy it. You were quick to text me when you thought I was in the hospital. If you were really just there, you would have helped. And if it had been me, I would have noticed you. I was concerned about you. Not concerned enough to stop and check if it was really me. Your story doesn't make sense. You're good at this, aren't you? You need to talk to the cops. Better to come clean before they check the CCTV footage. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. Why would I do something like that? Because you thought it was me. And you don't care about me and my baby girl. Ugh, I'm sick of you. You're poisonous. Stay away from me and my family. Don't ever come to this neighborhood again. You've already decided that I'm guilty. What happened to innocent until proven guilty? I've been set up. It's a trap. Fine, then tell me why you were on this side of town. You said you were just in the area, right? Why? Do you have any other reason than to see us? I'd like to hear it if you do. Maybe you could convince me. I doubt it, but I'm still waiting to hear why. I wanted to see Thomas, so I thought I'd stop by. He's always at work this time of day. You know that. Try again. I was worried about you too. You're almost due. I was gonna see if there was anything I could do around the house to help. You told me not to come over, so I didn't text you beforehand. Even though you've done nothing but insult me and harass me since I married Thomas. Not to mention the deliberate bumping and shoving me while I'm pregnant. And how about rejecting the baby because she's a girl? There's a famous French bakery in your neighborhood. I was gonna buy some treats and bring them to your place. Today is Tuesday. They're closed every Tuesday. Is that the best you've got? This won't hold up in court, you know. You'll be charged with assault. They won't even need the CCTV footage with such a weak alibi. It wasn't me, I swear! You need to tell the truth. The more you lie, the worse it will be. Are you really going to drag this through the courts? It would be better to just admit it now. The judge might be more merciful, and given your age, you'll probably just get house arrest or something. And again, depending on the judge, if you're convicted of assaulting a pregnant woman, you might end up in jail. You just shut your damn mouth! I wish it was you who was taken to the hospital! Sasha? I just got a call from Thomas. Did you tell him about the incident today? Of course, and he knows how much trouble you're in if it was you. The whole family will have to live with a disgrace. How many times have I gotta say it? I didn't do it! I was nowhere near her! I was terrified for the woman who fell. Terrified of what will happen if you're convicted. Terrified of how Thomas would feel having a mother in jail. Why did you do that? It's none of your business. It's all my business. If my husband's mother goes to trial and is found guilty of assaulting a pregnant woman, it's monstrous. If there's some serial pregnant woman attacker out there, I need to be alert. What if he or she has a vendetta against the pregnant? Just hates pregnant women and is obsessed with pushing them. I'd be too afraid to leave the house. Maybe some kind of twisted psycho who gets a kick out of knocking over mothers to be. I never heard of such a thing. If he or she is out there pushing over every pregnant woman he or she sees, I could be next. Nobody said she was pushed. She tripped apparently. That's not true. There was a witness who saw everything. What? Who? What did you hear? A woman in the building across the street heard the ambulance and went downstairs to see what was going on. Oh, I see. She heard the ambulance and went down. 
Not a witness, then. But she talked to the pregnant woman. She said she'd been pushed. So what happened to her? I'm assuming you asked the cops. Do you really want to know? Yeah, well, as a fellow woman, I'm worried for her health. You really want to know? Are you prepared for this? You won't be able to forget once I've told you. What? What do you mean? I won't be able to forget it, huh? I mean, you better brace yourself for what I'm about to tell you. Brace myself? Ugh, okay, just tell me already. And you swear you had nothing to do with what happened today? You were in the area to see your son, even though you knew he was at work. And you also wanted to buy bread, even though it's a famous bakery and everyone knows they're closed on Tuesdays. This will all go much smoother if you just tell the truth. Judges are extra harsh on lying time wasters. The truth will come out sooner or later. There's a statement from the victim in CCTV footage. A confession of guilt is always better than dragging people through a long court case, only to be found guilty. No! I just wanted to annoy you a little. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. Please, Sasha, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Stop frightening me. Just tell me what you said. What are you talking about? Frighten? The most frightening thing was you pushing a pregnant woman. It's such an unspeakably evil thing to do. It was you. You're the culprit. You practically admitted it. Unbelievable! Culprit? The woman is going to be okay. Okay, that's a relief. But she got a few cuts and bruises. The baby is okay, but she could have been much worse. The police are out now looking for the older woman who pushed her. It won't be long before they find her. They have a couple of eyewitnesses they're questioning now, and they've requested the video footage from several shops. Security cameras. You need to turn yourself in, Marie. It will look much better if you go to the station and show remorse. Sasha, please do me a favor and keep this a secret from Thomas. Can I trust you to keep it between us? I'll never show up at your house again, I promise. Just do me this one favor, please. I'll never bully you or disrespect you again. I won't question your role as a wife and mother, I swear to you. So you do regret it? Good. You should. Who does something like that? Did you think you were above the law? I regret it as a mother and a woman. I regret what I did. I've been unhappy since Thomas got married and moved out. I was jealous of the happiness you and he have. Then you got pregnant and you both seem to be even happier. I wanted some of that. I haven't been this happy since Thomas's father died. He was a missionary in West Africa and got sick with sleeping sickness and malaria and dengue fever. I flew over to be with him and he seemed to be getting better. But just as we were getting ready to fly home, he got less of fever and the authorities came in white hazard suits and took him away. That was the last I ever saw of him. So you pushed a pregnant woman in the street. Is this your twisted way of excusing your awful behavior? I know, I know. It's unforgivable. I'll spend the rest of my life regretting what I've done. I'll repent. I'll shave my head and devote my life to helping the poor and the sick. Just like Mother Teresa. I don't recall Mother Teresa going around India pushing over pregnant women. I'll carry the shame for the rest of my life. A heavy burden of shame. Like Christ our Savior carrying his cross to Calvary Hill. I don't think the Bible says anything about Jesus going around Judea pushing over pregnant women either. <laughs> I'll have to live with this for the rest of my days. What about the victim? There's no justice in you. Just feeling sorry for yourself. You need to turn yourself in and try to make amends. It won't be easy, but you need to face what you've done. But I'll be arrested. What if they put me in prison? I can't go to prison. Please, Sasha, just keep quiet about it, okay? I'm begging you. I'm too old to go to prison. I don't know how to fight. I've never had a fight in my life. And yet you enjoyed pushing me around. I'm sure you'll be fine. Please, Sasha. We're a family. Just don't say anything. That's all I ask. It's not like you're lying to anyone. Just keeping quiet isn't a crime. I've talked to Thomas about it. He's shocked and angry, but he's going to the cops. 
You're running out of time, Marie. You need to go to the police station yourself. Turn yourself in. There's no point dragging this out any longer. Wait. I'm sorry. I know I was wrong. I've changed. I'll never do something like that ever again. Sasha, tell her I'm sorry. Tell the cops I'm sorry. That doesn't matter. <laughs> you assaulted someone, and that's against the law. You need to face up to it and take responsibility for your actions. What'll happen to me? That's for the victim, the cops, and the court to decide. I already told you what I thought could happen. Especially if the cops have to hunt you down. Sasha, you have to help me, please. I can't go to the cops. If you convince Thomas not to talk to them, I'm sure we could work something out. He listened to you. You thought she was me. You were trying to hurt me and my baby. That's obvious. You texted me thinking I was in the hospital when you thought you put me there. Do you think I want to help you after what you did? What you tried to do to me? You must be insane. It was just a joke. I didn't think you would end up like this. A joke? You've got a twisted sense of humor if you think this is even slightly funny. You sounded so pleased when you texted me. You thought it was me who was taken to the hospital by ambulance. You must have been so let down to find out it wasn't me. I don't want to stress Thomas out more. Come on, Sasha. Think of Thomas. What if I go to jail? What'll people think? I won't be able to face anyone at the bingo hall. I have no clue what will happen. It's none of our business. We've got enough to deal with getting ready for the baby. I'm sorry, Marie, but we're done with you. Please don't try to contact either Thomas or me again. Well, what do I do if she sues me? I don't have enough money to pay for a lawyer, let alone huge amounts of damages. Do you think I'll have to pay fines? What happens in cases like this? I don't know. Nobody I know has ever attacked a pregnant woman. What happens after all this? I can't live by myself. I'll never make it. What'll I do about the neighbors? They won't want a criminal living in the area. It's a very strict and religious neighborhood. You're on your own, Marie. I hope they put you in jail. It's the best place for someone like you. Maybe that will teach you a lesson. I'm sorry. I'm so very sorry. Forgive me. I don't have anyone else to turn to. Don't apologize to me. You need to apologize to the poor woman you hurt. You're lucky she didn't lose the baby. Then you'd be facing a long sentence for murder. I won't forget how you treated me. Don't ever come near here. You're dead to us. Don't cut me off. We're family. You wouldn't want to never see me again. I can't survive on my own. I've seen those shows and documentaries about women's prisons. I won't last a day. I don't want to get stabbed in the shower. Didn't you say you never want to see my fat, puffy face again? Well, wish granted. I hope they lock you up for a long time. Thomas turned Marie into the cops and she was cuffed that very afternoon. She begged for forgiveness, but the victim wouldn't take a dime and Marie was slapped with a fine, a three-year probation. She also had to shell out for a lawyer and steep court fees. I was furious she didn't get locked up, but as soon as her friends and family found out, they cut her off. I guess that's some kind of justice. We also blocked her text and cut all ties with her since the trial, so I have no clue what became of her. I do know that she's living a hellish life she never dreamed of a few months ago. And as for me, I have my baby. And the three of us moved into a brand new house in a nice quiet suburb. Thomas has been amazing. I worry that he's doing too much around the house, and he seems to be sincere about it. We've kept our new address a secret so Marie can't track us down. Close family who knows where we are have sworn to keep it from her. I can finally breathe and raise our little daughter without that wicked woman shoving me around and bossing me around. I can't wait to tell my daughter how happy she has made us by coming into our lives. And that's the end of it.